What's up, everyone? Julian over here from Jack Vegans, and we got... Hey, Coach Thompson here. Excited to be here. I'm the head exercise specialist at the Jacked Vegans Academy. Hell yeah. Super smart dude. You have a bunch of like masters and, and degrees, right? I have one master's degree. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So today <laughs> I decided to bring Coach Thompson to talk about body recomposition. We get this question all the time in social media. We get people that tell us, hey, I want to lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. A lot of people say the holy grail of fitness so we're going to talk about if this is true if it can happen and if it can happen when does it happen when doesn't it happen and we're going to give you all the scenarios and by the end of this video you'll know exactly whether you can do recomposition whether you should use it as a goal and you'll have a pretty good idea of what you should be doing right now can you gain muscle and lose fat at the same time so is that even possible okay let's start with well, how do you want to open this, Josh? No, I think that makes total sense. And this is an issue that general population really struggles, I think, to grasp their mind around. They always think that if they're training for X amount of time, then they're going to be losing fat and gaining muscle and body recomposition, no matter what their training looks like, no matter what their nutrition looks like, no matter their protein intake. Um, and so that's an issue because people are not going to see the results that they want or that they're striving for because it should be prioritized to dedicate certain training phases, depending on where you are in your training. To one or the other, to either gaining, gaining muscle or, or losing fat. The funny thing is that a lot of people just, I've gotten this question many times. So, so I want to just ex do the holy grail. I want to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. But, and, and they spend a lot of time just trying to find something that's super special. A hundred percent. You know what the main issue is? There are three distinct parameters that I can think of that it is possible to gain some muscle and lose weight at the same time. The first is if you are brand new to training, your muscles are going to crave that stimulus. They're going to pack on the muscle for a brief period of time, and you're going to oxidize fat because you're going to be burning a ton of calories. And so for the first few months of your training, you will indeed put on some muscle and lose fat at the same time. The issue you run into is people think they can do that for forever. They think they can not monitor their calories. They can not monitor their protein intake, their volume in the gym, et cetera, just because for the first few months they saw some progress. But if you're looking to have a healthy lifestyle, maybe you do body recomp for a month or two, and then you start to really narrow down what your training needs to look like. So for anybody that's a beginner, yes, you will lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. The second circumstance is somebody who used to lift all the time, and then they took a break for a year or two. So an example of this is, let's say somebody is used to being in the gym five times a week, right? And then they go through this whole COVID crisis that the world has experienced, and they stop lifting, and they're not active at all, and they're just watching Netflix or working from home or whatever, and they put on 20 pounds of fat. As soon as they step back into the gym, their muscle memory from this concept called myonuclear domain is just going to expand rapidly, right? They're just going to retain all the information they used to know, and they're going to lose fat really fast. They're not even going to have to worry about calories very much. So that's example number two, somebody that used to be really fit, but got a little bit overweight for the first couple months of their training, it's going to be really easy for them to body recomp. And then the third and final example is somebody who's using an exogenous drug source, a performance enhancing drug is going to be able to do a similar thing. Now, all of these are pretty short lasting, and that's where you and I need to discern as coaches where someone needs to be in their training. And we need to encourage people to start with good habits of going through either massing, maintaining, or cutting phases, or else people are just going to think they're going to body recomp their entire life, and eventually it's not going to pay off, and the byproduct is going to be subpar to what they could have accomplished. 100%. So the, the main thing that people got to understand is that losing fat and gaining muscle require two strategies that are completely opposite to lose fat. You need to put yourself in a caloric deficit. That means that you need, you need to eat fewer calories than the ones that you burn on a daily basis. That way your body will start using tissue as energy and you will start oxidizing fat. So that's fat loss. Okay. So if you eat, if you burn this amount of calories, you need to be eating this amount of calories. And then this is the deficit. Now for muscle gain, you need to do the opposite. You need to, eat more calories than the ones you burn. And then the extra calories will be converted into tissue. So 
I'm hoping you're starting to see why having recomp as a goal doesn't make much sense because it literally requires you to do completely different things, gaining muscle and losing fat. Now, like Josh said, there are cases where it happens, but it's finite. So like he said, mm. if you start training at some point, it'll stop happening. And then you'll start to get smarter about the way you plan. If you take drugs at some point, it'll stop happening. And you have to either take more drugs or be smarter about how you plan your faces. Right. So having, trying to find this holy grail would just leave you wasting time and with a lot of frustration because it's not a good way to structure your training and your nutrition. I could not agree with you more and adhering to a certain specificity of your training is a prime example of how to optimize training. And so when people don't understand how energy balance works, this is where kind of this misconception comes from in the first place, because it takes a high demand of energy of currency and the economic value is very small just to maintain muscle. And so to think that you can be in a calorie deficit and your body is not going to be able to feed itself the energy it needs to grow muscles, but yet you can still grow muscle. It's counterintuitive to how energy balance works in the first place. And so understanding these principles is key to knowing, okay, during the winter, I'm going to go through a mass phase where I'm going to feed my body everything it needs to be anabolic and to build my muscle tissue. And then narrowing that down in the spring or summer, or whenever you want to look your best and really focusing on the oxidizing of fat. Because at the bottom line, your body is going to be either losing mass in general from whatever source or gaining mass in general. So your pounds on the scale are going to go up and down depending on what your energy uh, intake is. And so prioritizing where that's going to come from is crucial. Yeah, man. So I think we can, we can give people some directions as about what, what they should be pursuing, depending on how they look and, that, um, and on their current body composition, what are good parameters for you, someone to decide whether they need to go on a fat loss mm -hmm. phase on a maintenance phase or on a muscle gain phase. Great question for the first few months of a lot of people's training, let's say you're between 10 and 20 or 25% body fat as a male, uh, and then maybe 20 to 35% as a female, I will almost always put people at maintenance calories because for the first 10 weeks or so, they are going to experience that body recomp that we're talking about. But after that initial 10 week period, which is not very much time at all compared to your entire life. Um, it, it's crucial to, to start emphasizing what you want to accomplish. So let's say you lose 5% body fat um, as a male, right? You started off at 15%, you lose down to 10%. Well, then me and this male would have to have some type of discussion. What are your future goals? What do you want to accomplish by next summer? By the time you're 35, if you're 30 years old right now, having that goal in mind helps establish what your training needs to look like. And so let's say he goes down to 10% and he's pretty lean. And we feel like you at 10% could weigh 10 pounds more than you do now. So you would be jacked, right? In order to accomplish that, we will set aside a dedicated six months where this male has the understanding he's going to sacrifice some body composition. He's going to put on a little bit of fat, but he's also going to reap the benefits of eight pounds of muscle gained or whatever in that six months. So by the end of the six months, maybe he total put on 20 pounds or something, 25 pounds and gained eight pounds of muscle, in which case we take him through a fat loss phase so that by the time he's down to that ideal body weight again, he's eight pounds heavier than he was or 10 pounds heavier than he was or whatever. And he's significantly leaner and his muscles are just shredded and popping out. That's the only way for that to take place. So like in the beginning, he did, you know, put on a little bit of muscle and gained a little or lost a little bit of fat. But in order to keep working on that, in order to keep optimizing your body composition, you have to go through structure goals. So a good proxy in order to understand what you need to do is how long have you been training? If you haven't been training very long at all, Keep your calories at maintenance. Don't worry about them very much. Hit your training really hard for 10 weeks or so. Really get used to being in the gym because you don't need all of this information thrown at you at once. After you go through that 10, 15 weeks, whatever it is, find out what your goals are and start by attacking it. 
So be in a calorie surplus if you want to put on more muscle or be in a calorie deficit if you're feeling like you're way overweight. That's the best way I can answer that question. And then that, that's a great answer, man. So to recap, when someone's starting out with training, if they're between 10 and 25% as a male and 20 and 30% as a female, the best strategy is to start maintenance calories while training very hard. And obviously while eating sufficient protein as well, protein is key here. And then that they're going to experience some body recomposition. And after those first 10 weeks, then it's important to start setting more, more structured, more goal exactly. focus. That, that's the word that I was looking for. And after that, it's just a matter of just keep repeating the process for years and years to come. Yes, because let's say you have somebody that's severely overweight and they go through a body recomp phase. And after that phase, they're thinking to themselves, man, I really want to put on muscle, but I also want to lose fat at the same time. My answer is lose fat because if you're in a deficit for a long period of time, let's say 20 weeks total or something with a couple of maintenances, by the time you're out of that deficit, your body is going to be craving excess nutrients and they're going to be partitioned awesomely. So after you go through, and what that means is after you go through this deficit, when you start that muscle build phase, you're just going to pack on muscle because you've been in a deficit for so long that those nutrients and those extra calories are just going to be shuttled into your muscle cells. And it's going to be an awesome process for you. Now, I do have a question. Um, so as a beginner and as someone that's coming back from a period of not working out back to the gym, like COVID, can someone be in a deficit and still accomplish some body recomposition? Because I know we've seen that happen with, with yes. clients. Yes, because your body has a priority system. Okay. It has a, a hierarchy of demands that it's trying to accomplish. One of the things your body prioritizes is new stimulus breaking down your muscles. Your body knows how important your muscles are. So when that takes place, the first initial calories are going to go towards repairing those muscles to a certain degree so that that breakdown doesn't happen again, because we're built to survive. And so if I'm a caveman and I know that in order to dig myself out of this cave, I have to lift X amount of boulders or whatever, your body doesn't know what you're lifting or what your goal is or whatever. We've just figured out kind of what our body does. And so the first few, maybe even two or three months of that new stimulus, your body's like, nope, we can't fail there again. We got to recover there again, no matter how many calories you have. That's going to be the main priority as you're losing muscle tissue. But after your body kind of compensates and realizes the demand for growing muscle right now, because I've already put on two or three pounds of mass, wherever, it's just too much. It's not worth the energy trading here. That will, that will start to recede and you will not put on as much muscle as you used to because it's too great of an energy requirement until you introduce a calorie surplus. Yeah, your body's going to be like, we have enough muscle to move the rock. We don't need to put on more muscle now. Exactly. We need calories for something else. Right. Awesome. And if you're wondering how to calculate your calories, then there's a link in the description that's going to take you to an awesome calorie calculator that we have at Jack Vegans, completely free. That's pretty cool. So you can click <laughs> on that and figure out your maintenance, fat loss, or even muscle gain calories. Okay, you just got to input your information and it'll, it'll let you know. So it seems like it is actually viable for for someone to, to have recomposition as a goal then, um, if they fit the criteria that we talked about. For someone that's a little bit more advanced, then again, they should be just focusing on specific, specific phases according to where they're at right now. Yeah, and I would say the last little caveat here is if you are constantly going through a body recomposition phase, that means you're really inconsistent with your training and there's a greater priority that you need to focus on. Find somebody to keep you accountable, uh, make sure you have your training program laid out, whatever, but you don't want to go through a body recomp every single year because that means you stop training for a while or we're lazy in the gym or lazy with your diet or whatever the case may be. So body recomposition should happen one time or like if you break a leg or something and that's it. This should not be a main focus for a lot of people. 100%. And if you're interested in getting our help with this, it's very simple. All you got to do is click on the link in the description and you'll fill out a quick questionnaire. It's about three minutes. You'll let us know what you want to accomplish, the things that are holding you back. And then we'll just get on the phone. We'll do a quick consultation to see if and how we can help. If I feel that we can and our team feels that we can, we'll let you know about next steps. And if we can't, we'll give you some free resources and we'll stay friends. That's it for this video. Anything to say? 
uh, to wrap it up, Josh. No, thank you so much. Good luck, everyone, with your training.